Hello there. Welcome to this channel. My name is Dick van Oeveren and we are on video nine. Um, and this video series is all about how to configure, set up, uh, orchestrate, manage uh, your data center using Aruba OS CX switches, uh, Aruba Fabric Composer and the Pensando Services Manager. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to uh, enforce security policies in um, a situation where you have non 10k switches and 10k switches and let me show you the diagram here's the diagram and what you can see on the left side here is I have this VM 10.6.204.112 and I want to have this VM communicate with VMs that are sitting on the other side connected to a 10k switch and so I need to do some stuff right so I need to configure some um, you know some some entities here and let me show you that in the overview um, so actually here you have the the full list of the all the videos that I have created and I will be creating we're on video 9 um, and so what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to create a VSX link aggregation, create a VLAN interface, so VLAN interface 1204. Um, once I've done that, I want to kind of like check the connectivity between the VM and the gateway, see if everything works, and then create an eVPN instance that um, allows me to use VXLAN overlay uh, to reach the uh, the 10k switch is from the 1204 network. Uh, once that's done, uh, I get, again, I want to validate the connectivity between the VMs, so between the 1204 and the destination networks. Um, and then I'm going to um, change the security policy so that I can have some um, security enforcement on the 10k switch for traffic that comes from the 1204 network. So let's get to it. I'll start by creating a VSX link aggregation on the VSX pair connecting to a vSphere host. Let's start with the uh, MC lag with the multi chassis lag on the VSX pair. Before I do that, uh, I'll just quickly want to show you that everything has already been set up on the vSphere host. You can see that there's this distributed switch and I have these uplinks here and you can see that I have the lag configured up my links my, my link is up and everything is operational and I have this VLAN 1204 configured and there should be a VM attached to that port group that's the uh, 204.112 so from a vSphere uh, perspective we are fine Let's go into the link aggregation configuration. From the actions menu, I can click on add. And let me just uh, select this one, create multiple M lags for VSX pairs because I'm creating an MC lag, multi chassis lag. Um, let's provide a name prefix, say, um, VSX lag, um, lag number 10, um, no, actually, uh, lag number 10, yeah, lag number 10 should be good. <clears throat> Select the VSX pair, uh, that's the VSX primary secondary in there, and uh, the ports. I know for a fact that interface 115 of both VSX switches are the uh, interfaces that connect to the vSphere host. I can validate that and you can see that in the green pop-up that it's this is a valid uh, configuration. Um, yeah, so I can leave those settings um, and uh, of course I want to have VLAN 1204 assigned uh, to that lag. In summary and then if we are happy with the settings, well, oh, well, I'm happy with the settings, click apply. And then the 
uh, VSX lag is being provisioned to the VSX pair. Okay, and then once created, I can check out whether the link aggregation is operational, and I can see that here it's it's very operational. So we're good there. That's the link aggregation. Next is to configure an IP interface on that network, on that VLAN, VLAN 1204. So I'm going into the GVA VRF, go into IP interfaces, and so you can see that there's no IP interface for SVI 1204 yet. I'm going to create that one, VLAN 1204, because that's the one that I've created. I need to select the VSX pair because that's where this uh, VLAN or this SVI resides. 6.204.0 slash 24. And the active gateway. Just provide a MAC address. Uh, I don't need to enable local proxy R because I'm not using any private VLANs here. Okay, IP interface VLAN 1204. Okay, and these are this is an overview of all the settings. Click apply, and then the SVI is applied to the VSX pair. You can see that here, 12.04 on VSX primary and VSX secondary. Let's see if I can reach the gateway, the, the default router from the uh, from the VM. Right. So you can see that I'm on the 204.112. And let's see if I can ping 10.6.204.1. And I can actually reach the gateway so that's fine the next step is to create the eVPN instance on the VSX pair I only create this via uh, eVPN instance on the VSX pair uh, for uh, for VLAN 1204 um, and so what I can do then is if I want to reach the other uh, SVIs and the other VNIs on the 10k um, the, um, the the path will be using the layer 3 VNI, so the EVPN VXLAN layer 3 VNI to reach that destination. So I'm using overlay routing uh, to reach the destinations, which is pretty cool. Okay, uh, let's create an EVPN instance. Um, I only want to create that EVPN instance on the VSX pair. Um, let's give it a name, uh, EVPN Network 1204. Uh, the VNI mapping is to VLAN 1204. I will use the base uh, layer 2 VNI here, so we will just add that one. Um, so my MAC address pool here um, and my root target type setting to auto. Okay, so let's create that eVPN. On this demo, I want to create an eVPN between um, VNI 1204 and VNI 1203. And for VNI 1203, on the, so the, the 1203 network on the 10K, I have not created an eVPN uh, at this stage, right? So only for 1201 and 1202. You can see that here in the list, there is no eVPN for um, VLAN 1203. That means that I need to create that uh, eVPN instance as well, right? Okay. Um, and that instance has to be um, created on the um, on the 10k switch because that's where uh, network 1203 resides. <clears throat> um, 
1203. Do the VNI mapping to VLAN 1203. Let's skip that base to VNI. Select the root target type to auto. Next. And then apply. Let me explain what I just uh, did by creating the eVPN instances. What you can see here is the diagram. And so what I've done initially is I have created an eVPN instance here on the VSX pair for, uh, for VNI 1204. Um, and I have created an eVPN instance on the 10K for VNI 1203. Now what happens is, is that when I communicate from the 10.6.2.04 network to the 10.6.2.03 network, what happens is that when that packet enters the VSX switch, it will go into the overlay, into a layer 3 VNI, so it will be routed from the VSX pair, uh, routed to the 10K switch using the layer 3 VNI. And then it reaches the 10K switch. It will be coming out of the layer 3 VNI and going into the layer 2 VNI back onto VLAN 1203. So I'm using the overlay here to reach uh, network 1203 from network 1204. That means that network 1204 is actually not configured on the 10K switch. It's only configured on the VSX pair and vice versa VLAN 1203 or network 1203 and the VNI is not on the VSX pair. And let's see if we can reach the 203 network from the 1204 host. Let's check out the IP address again 10.6.204.112. Let's see if we can reach one of the 203 hosts so it's either 104 or 108. Uh, the 104 is working, 108 is working too, and let's see if I can SSH into one of the other hosts. And you can see I can actually SSH into the box. And so there is a reason for that. Now the reason for um, the SSH to work, right? It's not blocked. And let me just show you the PSM here, going to the networks, is that there is no policy assigned. So there's only an egress policy coming into the switch from the 10K. There is no ingress policy uh, assigned to, um, to this network. And therefore, all the traffic coming in uh, uh, from third party switches, so from non 10k switches, is basically is allowed. Okay, so what I can do is I can uh, say, well, assign this block SSH policy uh, on ingress as well, so going out of the 10k switch, going out to the 1204 network basically. And let's save that one. And now I have this block SSH policy also assigned on ingress, so egress for the switch. Let's see if it works now. Uh, let's do an exit here and SSH again. Oh, well, I can still, um, ha I still have SSH access actually. Okay. Um, and there's a reason uh, why. And let me also show you that reason. And the easiest way to find it out is to go into the Aruba Fabric Composer, go into Policy, and go into the Rules section. And so in the Rules section, I, you have this Block SSH rule here. And now what you can see is, is that we have this source uh, endpoint group. And this source endpoint group 
only mentions the 10.6.203 network. It doesn't, it doesn't cover the 204 network. What that means is, is that the, the policy is only triggering on the 203 network, not on the 204 network. So what that means is that we have to change that. So we have to go into the, um, well, what we can do is just edit, uh, edit that rule and uh, add a new endpoint group. So I've got network 1203 and let's add a new endpoint group, network 1204. And the endpoints, let me just add the 204 network here as endpoint. Okay, let's do that for the destination as well. Click apply. Okay, now, now you can see that I have two source endpoint groups and two destination endpoint groups endpoint groups, the 204 and the 203. And so let's put it to the test again. Let's see if we can SSH into the 203. And now you can see that SSH is being blocked because uh, it is triggering the endpoint group, the 204 endpoint group. And this shows how to uh, you know how to block traffic coming from a non 10k switch going into a 10k switch and then going back into the PSM uh, let me show you some firewall logs uh, select the policy block SSH on my GBA VRF um, actually I want to see the denied ones let's see yes um, you can see here from 10.6.204.112 going to 10.6.203.104 I can see a deny and I can see the policy and the rule that's being enforced for that flow so that's all working fine and that's it for now um, thanks for watching again the next video, uh, I, I don't think it's going to be a very long video. In the next video, I will be covering a stateless ACL, how to provision a stateless ACL uh, onto a switch. It can be Well, in this scenario, I will just do a 10K switch, but it can be any switch within the fabric. So it can also be an 8325 or an 8360. Uh, so that's, that's next. Um, so again, thanks for watching. Hope you liked the video and see you next time. Bye.